So many of you have reached out to me recently and been asking me about whether or not artificial intelligence is going to take over software development jobs in the near future. Because there's an AI tool that just recently came out called GPT-3, which is actually producing code, meaning you ask it for something and it will actually generate code for you which can sound really scary because after all, I write a lot of code and if there's a machine that can do it, what am I gonna be doing here in the next couple of years, right? So I wanted to go deep on the topic and talk about what is it that is exactly going on here and do we need to be concerned? So let's go ahead and dive into it right now. All right, so first up here, let's talk about what GPT-3 is, this tool, this artificial intelligence tool that's producing code. So GPT-3 is actually just a text generation tool. You could think of it as like almost like Google, uh, you, when you type in a search that it tries to predict what you're typing. In the same sense, that's exactly what GPT-3 is. Now it's based on deep learning, right? So it's based on machine learning, but from what I understand of it, it has a very large data set. So it's looked at a lot of different information on the internet to come up with what it's going to predict. So the reason that people worry about this though is because, for example, this user on Twitter actually demonstrated that he created a tool where you could type in what you wanted for a website and it would generate the code for that. It would generate the JSX, which is React code for that. And he demonstrates a lot of really interesting scenarios. So again, that, that's, when you see that, you start to think to yourself, okay, that's really interesting. Again, am I gonna be even needed in a couple of years here? But I think what's even scarier for people, like the average person when they see this, there's also just general text generation. So what people have done is they've generated whole news articles that look very newsworthy just on, based on a couple of inputs. For example, there was a college student who wanted to prove that GPT-3 could create an article that could rise to the top of, uh, I guess, blogosphere, right? So he created an article and it actually rose to the top of Hacker News. And what's really interesting about that is that for many people, they see that and they go, this is the real deal. Like this is the real deal. We should all be scared. Journalists, everybody should be scared that this is coming for them. So I think just hearing that alone is pretty scary. And it makes it seem as if we're on the cusp of this revolution of this artificial intelligence revolution. But a couple things here to keep in mind as far as context. The first thing that's really important to know and to understand is that a lot of these examples that are being shown here in articles and in the news, it's handpicked, it's cherry picked to show the best possible results that it can produce. So for example, yes, the person who wrote an article using GPT-3 and it rose to the top of Hacker News sounds really good, but when you think about it on its surface, does that necessarily mean it's the most high quality thing? Does the most high quality thing on Hacker News mean that Shakespeare wrote it? Not necessarily. You could write a lot of things. You can use certain techniques to hook people in, but that doesn't mean that your content's very good, right? So you have to understand that it doesn't necessarily mean it's great content. Yes, it fooled people, but I also would argue that there's a, not a lot of great content just in general on the internet that passes for good content, right? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, another thing to keep in mind here is that people really don't talk about the mistakes that GPT-3 makes. So a lot of people don't talk about the times that they tried to create an article and it just spewed out gibberish, for example. Or there's even been examples, some, some crazy examples, where people have tried to query very simple things from GPT-3. Like for example, I believe somebody asked, like, what's the, the number before 1 million? And they spit out like 990,099, which is not the number before a million. So it, clearly there needs to be more work done. And yes, they could come along here in the next couple of years, but just because it sounds like they're close doesn't mean in actuality that they're close to anything that's usable. And look, for those of you guys who are scared of code generation, because code generation, again, threatens us who are software developers, who are aspiring software developers. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is that building an application that's more than just a simple website, that's complicated, that has moving parts, requires breaking that thing down using computational thinking. In my last video, I talked about how to think more like a programmer, and in one of the examples, I talked about something like Facebook. The average person sees Facebook and it seems very simple, right? You've got a news feed, you can like things, you can post things, you can message people, maybe join a group or something like that, but that's not even like 0.01% of all the functionality on Facebook, there's so many different moving parts. Anybody who's developed any type of application, their project managers, their business analysts, they know there's a lot of work that goes into building an application. There are many different moving parts. And to think that you're just going to be able to tell some piece of software like, hey, build me the next Facebook, it doesn't quite work like that. You have to understand computational thinking. 
And that's really the missing key. That's the thing that really makes me feel like I'm not threatened by GPT-3 at this point. Okay, so I think what I'm trying to show you in totality here is that GPT-3 still needs a lot of work. And even the CEO of the company of OpenAI that built GPT-3 has admitted that, look, there's a lot of hype around it and it still has some ways to go. So I think for a lot of you guys, you can take heart in knowing that at least for now, you're totally fine. And by the way, if AI does take over, I think more than just software developers are gonna be worried. I mean, lawyers are gonna be worried because they're gonna be some like AI chatbot that's just your lawyer. I mean, nearly everything is going to be taken over by AI if it's really that smart. Um, some cool things, by the way, to consider if you are a software developer or if you're an aspiring developer is number one, first of all, the code completion tools that are gonna be coming and are actually already here are gonna be really cool. So you know how there's IntelliSense in your IDE that predicts what you're trying to type out? Well, usually that's pretty limited. It's pretty limited based on what you're trying to do and maybe what programming language you're in. But if, if you actually had an AI that could predict what type of file you're writing, meaning predict, oh, you're in React, so you're trying to create a functional component and just built everything out for you, I mean, that is the type of productivity that can take you to the next level and help you to build some of the most complicated applications you could think of. So that's already here. I mean, people are actually already have extensions built for Visual Studio Code that can do that. So I think that's really exciting. And even beyond that, I think just having something like GPT-3 available, it means that there's gonna be more opportunities for those who are entrepreneurial minded. So if you can just think of ways to use that, which I mean, I can't even imagine all the different possibilities you could use that in, I think it's gonna be an awesome thing for everybody involved. For those of you guys who watch my channel, you know I'm all about entrepreneurship. I think that's how you should be thinking. You should be thinking that there's more opportunities, not the fear that's gonna take over your job. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know if you disagree, if you agreed with what I had to say, leave that in a comment below. Also make sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Other than that, also join my free Facebook group if you wanna get more content from me. I will leave a link in the description below. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, guys, peace out.